Hey hi there, it's Phil from statisticsmentor.com. Hope you're okay. It's quite cold outside today, so I'm better indoors. Uh, I'm going to spend the session proving this result. A result that we have seen examples of in a previous video. Expected value of a constant times a random variable is equal to the constant times the random variable. Is the first thing we're going to show. And then in a similar fashion, we're going to extend the proof to this, that the expected value of a sum of a constant times a random variable plus a constant is equal to a constant times the, ran the expected value of the random variable plus a constant. A and B is a constant, X is a random variable, and we're supposing that the expected value of X exists. Exists means that it, you can actually get a value for it we can actually do the computation and that's because as an aside here it lets me note that the expected value of a random variable does not always exist but if you do an introductory stats course you don't have to worry about that to do this proof we need a very the key result which I'm going to state now and that is the expected value let's do this big because it's important of a function let's call it g of the random variable x is equal to now depending on whether x is discrete or continuous we're only going to consider those two cases, basic cases, that's discrete or continuous well if it is discrete it's the sum of each outcome oops, the function of this xi over each x times the probability of all x's and if it's continuous we replace the summation by integration okay so over all x so let's big, put a big x there to say it's over all the region of possible values of x this is for x is discrete this is x continuous let's give you some examples of what this actually means g of x because it might not be clear at this stage. First example g of x is equal to say uh, x squared. The g function here takes your x. Here's my g function. Uh, and what it does is it squares it. So you get the output x squared. If we suppose that x is discrete, we would write that the expected value of x squared is equal to, not using this formula, it says that it's the sum of, and then the function of x, which I've told you now is x squared, so it's x to each x you square it, multiplied by the associated probability of seeing that x. Like that. Next example. Suppose we have x plus, oops, suppose that this gx is x plus 1. Then what happens is that this x goes, to the function um, squares the x and adds 1, and that's your output. So if we write to write this, we would write that this is equal to the sum of all that lot times the probability of xi okay, of all x um, if you want kind of like a bulletproof way of doing it it's basically anything I write gx is equal to anything anything I write there, you just um, plug it in front of the probability of xi. So we notice here that uh, this thing, probability xi never changes, it's just this bit because it's the g, it's the, it's the function of x. If we go to our proofs here, the first one is the function of g is that I multiply x by a constant a. If we look at the second case, the function g is I times x by a and I add onto a, const a constant b. 
All right. So hence, this is what you need to memorize. Okay. Uh, supposing again that the int the uh, expectation exists. I should have written there. Um, okay. So you can't say I didn't tell you. Supposing the expectation exists. Okay. So now we're ready for the proof. Proof. Set this out nicely. Let's do this one. So the expected value of AX is equal to. Now here we, we we're gonna uh, we have to know whether X is discrete or continuous. Um, let's say X is discrete and tentacle right without loss of general. So you let X be discrete. The proof for x is continuous is very sim is just the same, just replace summation by integration. I do discrete because students tend to be more happy with summation than integration. So here we're using the fact I gave you before, the function g is a times is a is a constant a times the xi. So I'll just do it in brackets, although I don't have to really put the brackets there. So that's the g x i bit times the probability. Now we need to use summation rules. Okay, if you shake on summation rules, note that look up on YouTube on uh, for my summation videos. We know that a constant, and this here summation is over i equal one to however many x's. Uh, data points we have for x, so let's say k. Why I've written, written that is to show you that the summation is over i. Okay, so anything to do with i, we have to keep within the summation sign. a is a constant; it doesn't depend on the summation sign, so I can bring it out. If that didn't make sense to you, let's just do it without summation sign. The first term is i equal one, so I would write. Uh, AX1 probability X1 then the next term would be AX2 times PX2 plus and then what we'd use is since we can see what the pattern's going on we can see three dots this standard maths to show you that it's a sum and then we put the final term to show you it's a finite sum a x k because we've just said let's call it k you can call it what you like though p x k now it should be quite clear to you look that each of these terms have got a in front of them so you can see it's a common factor we can see it's a common factor so it's just same as writing a outside and then we write a 1 x 1 plus x. All right. Now you can see the result follows immediately because all this lot in here is well. I can write it. You can see I can well I can write it with a summation sign. I don't have to do it if I didn't want to, but here you go. In any case, so that is the expected value of x. A times E X, that's all you have to write. Finish. End of proof. Okay, if you wanted just to do this using the summation sign, it's easier. So let's pick it up from this line again. Equal. From my argument, A is a constant, does, does not depend on the summation sign, comes out. A sum xi p xi. But this bit here is the definition of the expected value of x, A e x. Done. So you look at which whatever you prefer this method or this method, it's uh, it's still the proof. 
Okay, I'm just going to put the heating on. It is cold. Right, so that's um, the first one. The second one, if you're happy with the first one, I suggest that you have a go of this second one before I actually do it. And then you could just uh, see my answers, see how I work through it. Okay, the second one. 